Hello, hello, hello. How is everyone doing today? All right. I am here with a very, very special guest. His name is uh, Justin Jones, and uh, he's here to give everyone some expert advice on cybersecurity, how to find a job, how to optimize your resume. There is so much stuff that we have in store for you today. So please just sit back, relax as we get this conversation, and hopefully provide some real live guidance and some real live blessings in your life. All right. So Justin, how are you doing today? I am doing wonderful on this Saturday. It's the first Saturday of 2023. We have many, many Saturdays in front of us. Uh, so I think if we're uh, productive on the weekends, we can be productive on the weeks also. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right. All right. So Justin, so if you could please like for the audience, kind of like introduce yourself and then, you know, kind of like, you know, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came into um, the position that you currently hold. All right, so my elevator spill always is, you know, I, I joined as E1, uh, uh, U.S. Navy, back in 2005. I was 20 years old, didn't know what I was really doing with my life at the time. Uh, I ended up re-enlisting a few times. Uh, I ended up doing 14 years of service. Uh, left as an IT1, which is an E6, uh, out of the Navy. Um, during that time, though, uh, I, I knocked out a ton of certifications. So A+, Net+, Sec+, CASP. Uh, Linux Plus, CISM. Uh, I, I finished a degree in uh, cybersecurity, a master's in cybersecurity. Uh, so, so I use a lot of the TA and a lot of the uh, education benefits that were available to me. Now, granted, a lot of that I couldn't do while I was serving on ship, right? So, when I was on shore base, you know, I had a little bit more free time uh, to do things like that. So then, um, from there, I went into IT program manager, which I am right now. And the, uh, I would say uh, the best thing that help, helped me was LinkedIn. The recruiter literally reached out to me on LinkedIn and said, hey, uh, we have a position for you at the Little Creek base. I, I didn't know who Jacobs was, right? Uh, I thought that was the guy's name. Uh, I, I, I did a quick Google of them. They were 50,000 people strong. I was like, wow, that's a big company. Uh, and um, I was like, sure, um, you know, this is the salary that I'm looking for. Um, he set me up for an interview the next day, and two days later, I was getting a, a job offer. Uh, so uh, for me, it was pretty pretty quick and painless uh, leaving the military. I know that's not, you know, not everyone has the same, uh, you know, outlook or the same path that they take, right? Uh, so right, so right. I do feel for people that, you know, they struggle or they're trying to change job fields, right? So let's yeah. say you're a welder or HVAC technician, whatever it is, even if it was military or non-military, um, when you're changing job fields, it, it, it can be a, it can be eye-opening, right? Uh, even if it's not going into cybersecurity, going into anything, you know, it, it's, it's a change of pace and a change of uh, mindset. Right, 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 right. So like, as far as like your everyday life, like how busy is it in your current role? Oh, uh, so, so it, it can always change. <laughs> so in the IT world, it's always different, right? So what's, what's cool about my job in particular is uh, I work with the Navy SEALs. Uh, so we work around the special forces, things like that. So I'm walking around like, I don't know what that guy did yesterday, but it might have been <laughs> something cool, right? Uh, right so it's right. always interesting whenever I go in on a Monday, Tuesday, it doesn't matter what day of the week it is. Uh, whenever I go into work, it, it's always cool. So uh, it, it, it gives you a sense of pride in work. Um, at least for me, uh, knowing that the services that I provided, um, the troubleshooting my team does, things like that, um, you know, it, it actually has an impact on uh, actual operations and actual things that are going on around us, right? So when you see things in the news, I'm like, hey, I might have been a part of that. Maybe I was, maybe I wasn't, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. So like, how did you begin in like your IT journey? Like, you know, how did you start off like uh, getting into IT specifically? So I, I would say my biggest thing was I, I want I was a gamer. I'm, I'm still a gamer. I got a PS5, all that stuff. Um, so I, I, I think I kind of equated gaming to IT world, right? I, when you look at it, 
it, it's not the same, right? It's no, it's not even close to the same, right? <laughs> it, 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 what, it, they were both PC based, but it's 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 a far cry from clicking a few mouse buttons and you know uh, to actually going in there and actually fixing things, right? So sure. I would say my first five or six years in the Navy, um, I was doing uh, RM work, so basically radio frequencies, things like that. Um, it wasn't until I got to the U- USS Zumwalt. Uh, DDG 1000. Uh, if you ever Google that, it's a really cool looking stealth ship. Um, you might have seen it on the news at one point. Uh, so I was a part of that program. Uh, unfor- well, fortunately or unfortunately at the time, uh, it was all Linux based. Uh, so mm-hmm. I had to learn Linux. That's where I got my right. Linux Plus certification. So 12, 12 hour shifts, I was literally in a Linux box basically. <laughs> Right. Uh, fixing things, adding new users, all that stuff. So that, that's kind of where I really got my uh, my big dive into IT f- field, and then from there, I just I've just been growing and growing. So, like, how long did you actually spend in the Navy? A uh, fourteen years total. Okay, so for fourteen years. So, how was the transition like? like leaving the Navy and then tra- transitioning into try to find another so, job. So transitioning it. into the, into the job market, like I said, was pretty, pretty seamless, but I, I, I think there's a culture shift, right? So yes. I don't have someone telling me that I need to be up at 2 AM to muster to go do X, Y, and Z. Right. And we might get off at eight, nine o'clock if we get lucky to get a few extra hours of sleep. Right. So, so there's that culture shift and then there's that, uh, uh, almost like a disconnect with the with people that are around you uh, at, at work, right? So I used to work 12 on 12 off. So the five or six guys or gals, you know, around me, we, we create a strong bond, right? Here it's, yeah. you know, you have eight hour shift, you go home. You know, you don't, you don't have to like on a Friday say, hey, don't go get a DUI. Hey, don't go do this, right? <laughs> um, yeah. my, my first <laughs> command, they said, don't add and don't just subscribe uh, sub, subtract to the world population like that's yeah. literally what they told me right mm-hmm. um so I, I can't really say that around the people i work with now <laughs> right right but you know as e1 e2 uh they, that's what they said on the weekend They're like hey don't get a dui and then don't add it or I'm subscribe um so I'll that was a big the population yes yep um <laughs> so that, that was uh I remember that to this day, right? They were just, I was like, mm. what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what branch of service you're in. Like, they say the same thing all the time. So, like, how prepared were you for your transition? Like, uh, did, did you, how, what was, like, the education like? Or did you have a fear of, like, you know, uh, what am I going to do to, like, qualify for these certain jobs or whatever the case? So, education-wise, I felt very strong in, right? Uh, having the master's degree, having my SISM, having CAS. So, I'm at my IT level 3, IM level 3 requirements. That's the DOD 8570 for anyone that's in the DOD realm. My issue was... Uh, the experience. I I, mm. I was not a hundred percent. Now I, I I'll always sell myself, right? I'm I'm the best at anything. I will suit up for an NFL game, NBA game today, right? Put me in coach. <laughs> that, if you have that mindset, you're going to be successful in life, right? Right. I just worried that I ha- would have the um the feeling that I didn't belong there, right? Like I didn't have um i wasn't really ready for that you know experience wise right that, that's kind of how i felt whenever i was like it program manager I was like I'll, I'll go for it i'll interview for it i'll do all that and um you know i you know my boss at the time you know said hey you're pretty good i was like well thanks i mean we had a two-hour interview so i i was hoping that <laughs> that that made it look good right uh so that was my i i just felt like i was going to be out of place right so right because I, I had no experience in the corporate world or uh, DOD private or anything like that, right? I had 14 years military experience. That was it. Um, so I never had to hire people. I never had to fire people. I never had to really, I mean, I had to evaluate people for, you know, promotions, things like that. But I mean, that was pretty much it. There was no, there was no real interview process, right? So my first, my third week on this job, I was interviewing people, right? I had zero experience in interview process. But I jumped in it and uh, been successful since. I probably have interviewed, I'd say, over 500 people uh, over the last three and a half years. Yeah, that's one of the most um, that's that's one of the most challenging things for people coming from the military because 
in, in the military, your resume is on your chest. You really don't have to tell people <laughs> what you've done or what you've accomplished. People can look you up and down in three, five seconds and say, okay, I know this, this, that, and the third. All right, so that's good. So as you're, as you're landing your new role, right, into your current job, you know, you kind of speak, sp spoke about some of like the awkwardness and fitting in and, and the culture and stuff like that. How long do you, did, it, did it take for you to like adjust to like being a, a civilian and, and working in the civilian population? I think the shock factor uh, was a few months, um, to be honest. Mm. Uh, I think coming off of a short command on into this made it a lot easier because I was kind of almost working that eight to five schedule. Uh, Monday through Friday type thing. So so the scheduling wasn't really, off, you know, that much off. But it was just how you had to treat people differently, right? Um, so so right. your mannerism, your vocabulary, a lot, a lot of things. Like, I feel like there needs to be a mini boot camp for people leaving the military <laughs> of, hey, this is what you're supposed to do in the, in the corporate world, right? Like, uh, it's like you watch The Office, right? Like, don't do that. <laughs> Right. Uh, <laughs> like you need a mini right. boot camp because you're used to that. Right. Because, you know, I, I've had people, uh, you know, around me before that still act like they're in the military and it's not uh, appropriate, to say the least. Some of the stuff that happens. Right. So it's kind of like you got to pull them to the side and say, hey, the, you got to, you know, you got to change up a little bit of what you're doing. All right. All right. Hey, so uh, welcome, everyone, to the conversation, you know, while I give um Justin, a chance to uh, share any links or anything on uh, social media. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today is uh, we're going to be talking about how to land a job, you know, for anyone who's, um, you know, thinking about changing their career or, you know, uh, he's going to go specifically into like how to land a job, how to do your resume, you know, how to optimize your resume. And then I'm going to show everyone a little bit about that as well. So, you know, uh, we have a, a jam packed show today. Uh, for you. So, you know, I gave Justin just a little bit of opportunity to kind of introduce himself to everyone out there. And now we'll go ahead and get into like the meat and potatoes of this thing, right? So <clears throat> let's take, you know, John, right? So John is transitioning. John was working at a manager at Target, right? Um, he's watched a couple YouTube videos. He's gotten hyped. And now he wants to transition into cybersecurity. So how would you advise John on the next actions that um, he should take? So um, my next action would be truly understand what cybersecurity is, right? So uh, cybersecurity, I, I can throw out hundreds of job titles, right? So my right. first thing to John, uh, that, that manager, right, is, you know, you have a comfort level, right? So this is a salary you're at right now. A lot of people, they don't want to backtrack in their salaries or they can't, right? So right, if you're right. making, let's say, $90,000 a year, you can't be like, okay, I'm going to go work help desk for, at $50,000 for two, right. three years just so that I can get into that IT sector. You know, you have commitments that you've made uh, that make it hard, right? So one, one thing I would say is, you know, understand what salary needs you have and then what job titles aligned to those salary needs so once you do those two items then start digging into what what requirements those have right so if you're like say cybersecurity engineer right and it says you need eight years experience but that's the amount of money you need to make you can't really get into that level right at that point so you have to either change uh be okay with the income change or understand that that's just not the field to, for you to jump into. I mean, that's just reality of it, right? Um, and then if, if so you're how, doing management, it, you want to have those higher level certifications, right? And sometimes those mm -hmm. higher level certifications require you to have experience, right? right. So it's, it's one of those things where if you're not already in the field, it, it, it makes it a little harder to have those senior level roles uh, like we were talking about. So how does someone gain? Because like that's the biggest thing. Like when you see like you know all the job descriptions, they say, "Hey, we want you to have eight years. We want you to have five years. We want you to have two years experience." 
But for somebody, like, what type of role would you suggest someone trying to target who's just trying to get their foot in the door? I understand you talked about the salary uh, differential, right? And then, you know, making the suggestion like, hey, you might have to eat some humble pie for a little while, right? Until you gain your experience and stuff like that. So what would you, what type of roles would you suggest that someone brand new comes in and just, uh, you know, tries to target? So I would say anything IT based. I always say help desk, tier one, like PC tech support, things like that. Uh, Best Buy, for instance, right? You can go work for the Geek Squad for a couple of years to, to get that IT experience. It might not be directly in cybersecurity, but you have a good foundation of, of, of how the IT world works, right? So there, there's a lot of foundational items you need to you know be successful in that. Uh, it, and you, you wanna be successful in the job interview, right? So when you go set the job interview, you, you need to kind of know a few things, right? And and like I was saying earlier, um, I, a little bit further into the job titles is also research companies, right? Let's say Cisco, Google. I mean, I throw out some random companies, of course, but look at what they want, right? So their job description will have, let's say, 20 different items. And it might call out like one or two programs or maybe some program languages or something like that. Look into all those job descriptions say, what do I need to know or how long would it take me to gain that knowledge, right? So something might be, you know, 10 hours, but there might be something that may take two, three hundred dollars, right? Um, so like, I always look at it like, if I wanted to become a plumber, what what steps would I need to take to become a plumber, right? I'm never, I'm not a plumber, but th this is what I need to do, right? I need to understand what the, how much that job pays, different levels of it, different options within it. Um, and that's how I kind of look at it. Right, right. So when we talk about like the job descriptions, right? So how close do how close do you feel someone needs to be to a job description before like recruiters would like give them a chance or or anything of that? Sixty percent. I'd say about 60%. so. So I would say sixty percent. So there's going to be let's say let's say there's twenty items on there. Uh, I mean, it can be all. It can always vary, right? But let's say there's 20 items on there. There's probably only five to six items on there that's going to be 80, 90 percent of your job, right? There's going to be a couple little items on there that you may do once a month, once a quarter type thing, right? Because uh, it could be like uh, reports, and those reports are only do you know every month or every quarter, and that's just one little line item. But there could be other ones where you know it just matters what type of job you're in. But I would say that uh, the biggest thing is to ask the recruiter, you know, what um, what items are they really, really looking for? So you can hone your skills on that. And wh whenever I say ask the recruiter, ask the recruiter. Once you apply that go job at Google, Facebook, uh, Burger King, wherever it is, go on LinkedIn, find that recruiter and message them, please. And if you're not connected with me, connect with me and you'll be second connected to about 5,000 recruiters. So it, it's very rare you're gonna find someone that's not ready, uh, um, already linked to me that you can reach out to. Right, so now uh, you talked a little bit about uh, optimization earlier, right? So how does someone go on LinkedIn and make themselves attractive to recruiters for a specific um, job? So. Uh, so first up, t put that you're open to work. First and foremost, you know, and I, I know uh, some people are a little against that, you know, maybe with your icon, stuff like that. You can always go into the job, uh, little job icon and put open and then you list the different job titles. Like we referenced earlier, you need to know what job titles you're interested in. Don't just put cybersecurity. That's, that's way too broad. Try to, you know, uh, uh, analyze and actually put some items in there. Uh, so that's the first step. I know a lot of people, like I said, don't like the open to work icon. 99% um, of people on LinkedIn are open to work. I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now. If someone came by and said, hey, Justin, here's a 50% pay increase, uh, I might be taking it, right? Uh, sorry if my boss is on here right now. <laughs> uh, but, but that's the truth, right? That, that's that, that, that's if, if you're keeping me about the same work culture, working hours, all this stuff, I, why would I say no? I'm I got a retirement plan. If I can bump it up five, 10 years, I'm, I'm happy with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, like, um, like, like, like we said, we, you have to okay. properly align it. So look at the job description and then start tweaking your profile to, to look like that. 
So um, we have a question from um, like, uh, I, I believe her name is Saud Hassan. And she says that, hey, some people say that uh, we should remove the open to work frame from LinkedIn, even if you're really looking for one now. Is that so, right? So that that's so I I, I want to I feel 99 percent confident in what about the answer. People sometimes feel like their uh, current uh, company may target that person now. I, now, that's not legal. Let me say that first and foremost. Uh, at least mm -hmm. in the 50 states that I know of, maybe outside the U.S. it's different. Um, but you saying that you're open to work doesn't say, all right, well, let's get rid of this person. Uh, that that should never occur. And that that's I would say that that's not a good work environment to start with. I, I just I don't think it. I mean, I, I have employees that tell me, oh, yeah, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at that. I'm like, I'm open to chatting with them about different stuff and saying, hey, what can I do to retain you? Hey, why, why don't we look at this? You know, how, can I promote you? Can I do this and that? Right. So I have an open conversation with with the staff here and I understand, you know, some of them are, you know, applying to GS positions. Some of them are looking to, you know, get into networking. But I, I want to see that person grow. Right. That's my mindset. Yes, that's a vacant seat, you know, a few weeks from now, but I'll find someone new to fill that vacant seat. I just want to know that that person is keep on growing. Right. Right, right, right. So we have another um, question or comment. So we have Nayman. Um, he says, basically, majority uh, if the times in the interview, people are not hired on their skill basis, only what certifications or degree does that hold? What do you so? About so that? are we talking about DOD um, or are we talking about private sector? So so that's going to be a big change because DOD 8570 tax 01 dictates what I can hire, right? You can be, mm -hmm. you can have a doctorate degree right now and apply to a job and have 20 years of experience in this job. If you do not have that certification, I cannot hire you. You could have built right. the program. You could have built the World Wide Web for all I care. I cannot <laughs> hire you on without that certification. There is no waiver process. There's nothing. You have to have that certification, right? So I would say in the DOD realm, that's a hard requirement. I I don't interview pretty much unless I know you're going to test, you know, two, three weeks from now. Uh, I have someone that's testing for CCNA today, right? That we interviewed, right? If they pass the CCNA, they got the job. They've already did the interview and all that stuff, right? So that that's why I always encourage people to knock out certs in the military when they get out. Now, if we're talking about civilian sector, <laughs> uh, it's elbow rubbing. Let's just say that. So uh, you have a Harvard degree. Guess what you get jobs for, right? You you can be that two identical people, say twins. One goes to Harvard, one, another one goes to another regionally accredited. No one really knows that name school, right? They all both apply to jobs, right? They have the same IQ, they have the same test scores, same everything, same certs, all that. That Harvard, because of the name brand, is going to have a higher chance of landing those positions. It's just it's 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 how how the world works mm. so you're saying that basically companies do hire based on name recognition or you know people that might know someone hire based upon legacy right correct oh, so so you can you can do a quick you can go on linkedin i i don't don't trust my word for it you can go on linkedin and look up different companies and see what education not not just their education but what colleges and universities they graduated from right and if you see them leaning heavily into these certain colleges and universities, you already know that majority of the people that they're uh, bringing on board are going to come from these certain colleges and universities. It's it's the facts. Right. So now let me, let's transition. Let's see if we can uh, transition to uh, LinkedIn and then kind of see, you know, a little bit of what you've been talking about so far. So like when it comes to like searching for jobs, like you just mentioned, right? So, and everybody, uh, by the way, if you could do us a huge favor, please click like on the stream, right? It only gets the message out to the people. All right. Um, and right now, right, everybody, please uh, go follow Justin Jones, right? Get some great information every day, okay? Now, when we come over here to the job section, right? So we come into the job section. Now, where do I begin within this particular template, right? Um, based upon like some of the information that you've given us already. 
<clears throat> well, and you already had it up there, right? Recent job searches, right? So uh, the big one you went into was like cybersecurity analyst, right? And th though it was entry level, right? So that that's one of the targets, right? Is uh, what is considered entry level, right? Um, so once we once we identified that, let's just say cybersecurity analyst, just to make it, because uh, I could probably spend two hours on different job titles and you know th things of that background. So so. And most people are only going to look at cybersecurity analysts, right? That, that's a very generic, very broad title. If you're that plumber, that welder, whoever coming into this world, that's probably what you're going to first look for. Truly, it is, right? Um, so not only would you want to find that, you'd also just basic uh, job searches. You know, you need to also know what location you want, right? So, you know, you might not want a job in Anchorage, Alaska, but they'll hire you, right? <laughs> uh, you want right, right, to right. stay out in Hawaii, right? So, so that, that's another tweak you have to do is, you know, kind of the, you know, location. Um, I would highly, highly discourage. I, I'm a very encouraging person, but if you're just now joining into cybersecurity, IT field, stuff like that, I would try to lean more to in-person roles because uh, it's very hard to get remote work. Um, especially now we're in 2023 and more and more companies are pulling back their staff. Right. Um, so I would, I would say on site is, is what you're on site hybrid is what you're kind of looking for. And then what we can like, do here is, uh, let's do that man tech one that, uh, that that's probably a DOD work, but let's see, let's see if that's DOD or not. Okay. Okay. So I have man tech right here. Yep. So now first thing we're going to look for when, when you're looking at some of these companies, especially their DOD based companies. All right. Let's see if there's a clearance on there. So let's scroll down and see if there's anything with TS, secret, anything clearance based. All right. You're working for DISA. CSS. Yeah. So right there. So I'm not even eligible for that because I don't even have a CI polygraph. Right. But let's just let's disregard that piece of the puzzle and let's go into those, all the basic qualifications. Right. So right here, they're already looking for someone that's in their like early 30s, uh, late 20s to start with, right? So if you're just now graduating from college, I, I wouldn't even pursue this this type of that exact job, right? So this is more of a let's say someone that's been 10, 12 years in the military, they're separating from the military, um, and they have their SEC plus. They may or may not have a college degree because uh, it says in lieu of the college degree, of course, and then. Um, they have a, a little bit of experience with ArcSight, Splunk, Wireshark, things like that. And Wireshark, you can kind of self-teach. A lot of those tools you can self-teach yourself. Um, you know, give it about five, ten hours uh, for those. So, so this is a very unique uh, job. So let, let's keep scrolling down. Let's see if uh, let's see if we can get more of a junior one. Oh, so okay, keep scrolling down. So yeah, yeah. Let's see if we can find something that's more. Uh, let's see what Triple uh, A wants. Triple A. Yep. Okay. Again, we might find one in here that's you know a junior, you know more zero to two years. Let's see what this one wants. Okay. Um, I don't think it really called out. Uh, go back up. I don't think it called out anything about uh, years of experience. No. Like I was looking. Okay, what you'll need to thrive in this role. I uh, go back up. Was there a minimum standards above this? you'll do no just the job description look everyone apply to this if you're in copel texas <laughs> right now <laughs> right, That's right uh, so, 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 that, right that, so sometimes you're gonna find um job descriptions like this right very, where they're very so so first thing i would say is is it a solid company right triple a is a solid company right so so make sure that it's a legit job offering right you're you're gonna sometimes run into companies that are a little, I'd say iffy, <laughs> to say the least. Right. right. So, right. so this is a very generic. This seems like it is, uh, you know, it is a junior level role, uh, and uh, I would highly encourage anyone that's in that area, or would want to move to that area, to to apply to something like that, and and to see what they're looking for. Now, can you scroll back up on the job description area and see how many people have applied to it for this current role? All right, so we're looking at okay. So a day ago, this came out. So, so on LinkedIn, that's you have 70 applicants. That's not truly how many have applied to it, but at least that's you know you kind of ballpark. When you start seeing 200 plus applicants, that's when it's like okay, they 
it's had thousands of resumes right now, right? Um, so that 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 always it's it's a kind of a key there. Okay. So like, as far as like, so how like just like how you explain, right? Just to recap, so you saying like how we looked at that first role, right? Where it talks about like years of experience coming into this role right here, really didn't see any of that. No so education, be... no certification. Um, right. it, it seems like, uh, scroll down just a little bit. It looks like you you need some baseline knowledge of uh, NIST, HIPAA, things like that. Um, a lot of that you can self-research. Uh, you spend an hour on each one of those items and you can have a at least a broad understanding of what they are and why they're used, right? Um, so I technically i could i should be able to pull someone in within a week have them be able to based off the description be able to pass an interview uh for something like this right so, but again it's yeah, very so, generic so yes. uh yeah <laughs> so this would be talking about cloud framework pci would be talking about credit card information and hipaa would be like medical information so correct yep these are some of the stuff that you you know go through in other jobs and stuff but just like justin was referring to um, you know, that's something that you can definitely research on your own. So we have a question from Thomas Weissman. Is this being recorded? Uh, is this be, is this live being recorded so I can watch it later? Thank you for this value information. Yes, it is, sir. You can watch it on my YouTube channel. All right. And then uh, the live should be going straight to my um, uh, LinkedIn page as well as Justin's LinkedIn page. Right. So we'll make sure that we share a link afterwards so you can find the um, the live stream and get the information so thank and, you so much for joining us today brother and to that point i would say for anyone that's joining right now send me an invite i'll accept it i have about three thousand invites right now um <laughs> i had to kind of weed through them trust me uh but if you send me one right now um i'll, I'll definitely accept it uh so that you can uh have this resource uh apologize if you're seeing this two months from now three months from now um <laughs> but still reach out to me still uh you know follow me because like 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 he said, uh, I, I try to share as I try to share great content. I don't try to be one of those that's like, oh, look, I can get you a three hundred thousand dollar paying job. Now follow me. You know, and, you know, it's, yeah, some of those people I just I'm like, holy crap. But they they're influencers. <laughs> right. Right. So let's talk about this. So like how, how you know, we're, we're not out to damage anybody or anything like that. But how realistic uh, from your experience um, have you seen when, you know, people enter these uh, boot camps and stuff that cost thousands and thousands of dollars versus the actual results that they get? Uh, mixed results. Um, and sometimes it comes down to that person, right? Um, you may be able to test, you know, take a test. I always say CompTIA because that's like a, a baseline standard, right? So yeah. let's say you can take one of those tests, but that doesn't equate to you being able to do the job, right? Um, so, so that, that's where I'm kind of iffy about sometimes is when, when someone gets those boot camps and those certifications that they don't equate to the same job, right? Uh, take, take for instance, uh, someone that has CCNA, uh, they, they passed it two years ago, but they haven't done anything with it since then. Right. Um, I might do mm -hmm. a network admin interview for that person and they bomb it, right? Because, you mm -hmm. know, two years ago they started for two, three months to pass the cert. And then since then they've not used, yeah, they protocols. haven't used any of the skills, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I asked them about EIGRP, uh, VLAN, yeah. you know, how to set up mm -hmm. different routes, things like that. And, you know, they, they kind of blank face me and I'm like, that's some like base, you know, for the cert itself, that's some baseline yes. items for you to pass that cert. So, um, so I would say the boot camps are helpful to get you, uh, into that mindset and into that thinking. Um, it's you to sell it to that company now that you're ready to take on that job. Hey, so we have a question here for from uh, Marcos Gonzalez. Appreciate you joining the stream today. It says, thanks for the info, gents. Do you think help desk IT support is necessary to get into tech? I don't have the experience, but I am working on associates in the cloud and I do home labs on my own. I've also completed an IT program. So what say you, Justin? So... Yes, um, uh, we, we were ch chatting a little bit before the show started. Um, knowing the workings of a computer, knowing how uh, servers work, because you're going to be working in the cloud, that's what it looks like you're going to be doing. Um, 
knowing how that infrastructure works and operates is critical to you actually doing those jobs right so uh you know it'd be like saying i don't know what vmware is but i know how to you know set up a windows you know 2016 server on it right you still need to know how that vmware works and all that all those all the uh programs you know uh operate and then um on top of that you know you know i, I i'm having the security program so how does that security also operate right so if you don't know how the baseline equipment security operates it's hard to you know harden you know your uh, your cloud platform uh whenever you know you have a back door that's you know right there that you can just plug in and be like oh look i'm on um top thing so so i would i would push to get into it help desk mm -hmm. uh tech support uh role right and like i said I, i'll double down on that um, you know, just like myself and Justin, we were talking offline, but, you know, both of us have similar backgrounds when it comes to like the military and kind of things we do. And then, you know, anyone in the military will tell you, you know, no matter what you do, you go on to be in management and stuff. If you work in IT, you will never graduate from the help desk. You could be walking down the hall or somebody, and somebody's going to pull you in and say, Hey, could you please fix this? Or could you rob my printer or could you do whatever so you know but like it's very very uh important to have those skills you know i can tell you personally just for myself transitioning from the military and working a lot of help desks and a lot of networking transitioning into the cloud that baseline experience made it that much more easy for me right to have that foundation you know as you move on into a different career path and i would say another cheat sheet uh, that we have in front of us is linkedin find those jobs that you want to work at and then research people that are already doing that job. What what past experience do they have going into that field, right? So I want to be a cybersecurity engineer whenever I grow up, right? What did they have before that happened, right? I might not be the best example because I was, you know, military going into it. Yeah. Um, but you know, there, there's other people out there that you know have you know that type of experience. Right. So um, like the gentleman asked earlier, the live stream is on the page. Right. But like I said, you can just come over to, you know, someone's page and you can kind of like how Justin was explaining. So I'll just show my page just for a reference. Right. I can come over here and look at this person and say, OK, hey, what do they do? I can look at kind of the activity, kind of see things about how they post so on and so forth. I can look in their about section, kind of see things, you know, that they've written about themselves, their journey, you know, their expertise. I can look at their prior experience, see what job roles that they've been in. I can also look at their education experience and then I can kind of look at like, okay, this person is in this specific job role. What license and certifications did this person come through, right? Now, when you look at my page, it is very misleading because I have a bunch of certifications, but you shouldn't just really go get certifications just because. The only reason that I have uh, as many as I do is because I got it through my degree program with WGU and it was a requirement, right? But if you don't plan on like how Justin had mentioned to everyone earlier, if you don't plan on being a network engineer, there's no reason for you to go get the CCNA, right? Uh, you can do something like Network Plus and I can teach you a, a basic foundation, right? But when you go into a specific, when you want to go to a specific industry, you know, you should target specific vendor certifications for that specific industry. I would say, um, for people that are uh, looking into college, uh, like WGU or some other colleges like that, if you can uh, align a college to certifications like like uh, like you did, um, it is very very beneficial, right? Um, because now it opens up a door. Now maybe maybe you, you certified you know a year two three years ago on, on something, but at least you have some type of base understanding you know inside of that field, right? And you can also show an employer. Uh, that you have a baseline understanding of it. Right, right. Hey, so what I would like to do now, right, is kind of uh, talk about like resumes and stuff and how important, you know, uh, getting your resume together for employees is. Like, what do you see as far as that within the industry when people come to you for help or whatever the case? Well, we, we were one of the big, biggest cheats. <laughs> I always say cheats, uh, but one of the biggest helps uh, uh, we were talking about right before the stream you you mentioned it uh, is that job scan website um, to, to help align your resume to that job description right um, and, and you have it right there uh, open already so I, I, I encourage people to kind of look into this 
to kind of see how far off are you on what that job's looking for and how you can better align yourself to that. But again, once you submit that application, connect with that recruiter, message that recruiter. Easier you make their job, especially if you're the right talent, the, the happier they're going to be. You know, if my recruiter can only work three hours a week because uh, everything is staffed, sweet, right? <laughs> they're not overstressed, overworked, overtaxed, right? So, uh, so I always say connect and message. Uh, if you get crickets back, you get crickets back. But that was, you know, two minutes of your life to possibly get a, a new career. Yeah, so like just to go into just a little bit of detail, I'm not going to bog everyone down with details, but we do, and I say, when I say we, right, when I use the pronoun, I'm talking about myself and Justin prior to this live stream, you know, we did talk about this website because it is very, very beneficial, right? They don't pay me. I don't know if they pay Justin, but they don't pay me. But we, we, we I work are, for, so, so I work for free on here, right? So, <laughs> you know, I've helped hundreds, if not thousands of people land new jobs in the cybersecurity IT field. I've helped countless veterans all that transition all that stuff i, I I'm, I'm pro bono i'm zero dollars i do it because i get that message one day saying hey i landed x job and i'm like sweet you know you did it exactly, exactly. but if they want to start so, paying me i'll take it <laughs> right 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 <laughs> hey so when you when you guys come over here to job scan right if you've never heard of this website what this website does is like it optimizes your resume to a specific job title so I use this myself to actually land in my current role, right? So basically what you do is you come over to the website and then you kind of sign up for it for free. And then what you do is when you come over to the dashboard after you log in, it'll say, hey, get started. Let me go ahead and zoom this in just a tad. Oh, excuse me. Let me go ahead and zoom. I got two screens going on over here. So let me zoom this in just a tad so people can see what I'm talking about. So you'll come over here and it'll say, hey, new scan, run a new scan, right? So then what you do is you will upload a resume. So you can just upload a resume. I'll come over here real quick. Where did I put it? I put it in a resume demo. All right, so I just come over here and just load like a generic resume. So this is me, um, you know, with the stuff that I have in here. So now um, I need to copy and paste a job description. So like, let's say, hey, um, we was coming over here, we was coming to like uh, cybersecurity. And then basically what you'll do is you'll uh, just, you know, copy and paste. Let me see if this is the right thing. You come down to, okay, primary responsibility. So you can copy and paste the primary responsibilities or the basic qualifications, right? You can kind of copy and paste this whole thing. So I'll just go ahead and copy and paste just this little piece real quick. I'll come down here. All right, and then preferred qualifications. Do a old control C on that guy. All right, then I'll come back over here and then I'll copy and paste this into this website. And then what this do, what this does, once I scan this, right? Now you can also upload the cover letter as well. So now what happens when I scan it, it's gonna tell me everything that, you know, is properly done within my resume to the specific job title. Okay, so now, hey, what are the hard skills? So it asks for TSSCI within this job description, right? In my resume, I have it in two spots. The job description has it once. All right, so when it asks for a CM, right? All right, so then I have none of that in my resume, but the job description actually uh, asks for this. So on and so forth when it talks about these skills. Now, the reason why I'm gonna tell you about that is because it's very important because when I come back, I, don't, I saw it earlier somewhere um let me see okay the reason why that's important all right let me just leave that alone the reason why that's important right is because they have something out there called the ats so you know many many moons ago right you know recruiters and everybody used to just scan and look at everybody's resume but no now that's no longer the case so now what happens is your resume gets scanned through like this algorithm right and it's called the ats like the automated tracking system or something like that. So based upon the keywords that you have in your resume that are linked to that specific job description, that's how your resume will be filtered versus other people. So it's very, very important that you can use like either someone that you know that very good at writing resumes or a site like this, like an optimizer that can get your resume close 
um, to uh, the highest percentage as possible. So what JobScan recommends is that your resume is an 80% or higher match to the specific job description. Now, when I first started um, look my job search, I started looking and when I uploaded my resume for the very first time, it was like a 30% to the job that I'm currently in. So I started tweaking it and doing everything possible. Like it's something so easy, like when it says, like, hey, must have one year experience. All you gotta do is just put on your resume one year experience and then make sure that you have the appropriate experience, obviously. Uh, for that job, but just tweaking, uh, tweaking those keywords is very, very important to actually landing a position. And and to that f effect too, um, a lot of companies. Let's say, I'll just use Jacob. So I don't. Uh, months from now, if someone's reading this and I said Raytheon or someone else, it doesn't bite me. In my it doesn't come back to bite me. <laughs> um, right, right, but let's right. say let's say you're using like Jacobs, right? Um, so can you open up a Jacobs careers? If you just Google that real quick, it should. Uh, you should be able to see that as a uh, as a job that uh, as a website that pops up. So okay. so um, what Jacobs does, at least from my branch, is let's say you apply to a position, right? Um, we may get way too many applicants, right? Sometimes we only get a few. Sometimes we could get two, three, four hundred people in, in, right? What what happens is there's a re repository that all applicants go into, right? So you make your profile on here. Um, so for me, uh, just type in Virginia Beach. Uh, th this won't be cybersecurity jobs, but just type in uh, for that location on the side, uh, Virginia Beach. And another thing I'd say is it, it's sometimes difficult to navigate um, sites. Um, so for a while, like my site or the Jacob site had the Little Creek base and that was where the jobs were at. If you typed in Virginia Beach, Virginia, it wouldn't populate any sites. So sometimes that, that's a, it, it's self-induced us not finding people um type stuff so all right right now so so i'm again hiring manager or program manager whatever you want to call me uh today i, I go by like eight different hats some days right. so right now i'm looking for pc techs senior pc techs network admins let's uh let's go into that network admin for for instance so um i'm gonna say i think four years of experience uh you need sec plus uh, uh yeah scroll down just a little bit A lot, lot of words there, right? Uh, right? The big things is what you're always going to see is, um, especially with DOD work, see where it says that DOD 8570, that, that's, you have to have that, right? Sometimes whenever it's a non-DOD 8570 requirement, sometimes those can be waived, right? Mm. Um, same with clearances. Uh, that clearance could possibly be a secret clearance coming in. So even though you might not meet that requirement, still apply to it because you don't know if they can waive that requirement or if uh, there might be another job inside that bucket, right? So let's say you don't qualify for this, but you qualify to be a senior PC tech. You submit this resume, my my recruiters go in there and they're they're doing the ATS, you know, they're, they're doing their research and they stumble upon your, uh, your resume and they're like, okay, you, you can't qualify for network admin, but you qualify for this. So they, they call you, email you, and say, hey, we do have this position for you. Would you would you like to do this position? So so what I would always say is create accounts on these different company sites and submit your resumes. Even if you don't perfectly align to that job at that time, six months from now, a year from now, or it might be another job that they find you uh, inside there. Okay, so like just how you said, so for senior pt a senior pc technician because we had a gentleman um that was in the chat earlier that talked about hey uh, they wanted to kind of move to help this so like what type of skills or how would i go about targeting a role like this so pc tech uh so th again there's some more dod but i'm gonna i'm gonna get outside the dod realm let's just say uh this is you know working at target as a pc tech or you know some other company um as a pc tech uh, you need to know basics of, you know, if you can't sell me a computer, then th if you can't tell me all the internals of all the computers, what what it all does, that, that's like step one. Um, if you can't tell me what the BIOS is and some options inside of it, that's another step. So it, it, I would say CompTIA A+. Plus. That, that's kind of your, your bread and butter right there of how that works. And the other piece of the puzzle, uh, the other 90% of the puzzle, is uh, customer service, right? 
uh, you yourself have to be you have to represent customer service uh um and not everyone has that skill set right so not only do you need some technical proficiencies you also have to have that customer uh because you're customer facing at that point right 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 now let me ask you um a question so you know there sometimes you see people out there and they give flack right how do you feel about like the comptia certifications for people who are just brand new and getting started in uh, IT? Uh, I highly encourage it, to be honest. Uh, the reason why is you need to uh, somehow have an education, right? So let's say I wanted to become a welder, right? I'd go to a welding school to you know learn how to be a welder, right? Uh, almost every profession has some type of education, on-the-job training, something like that. And certifications uh, always mix reactions that everyone has to them, right? <laughs> Um, right, right, but, right. but that 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 that's a that's a baseline level that I feel that person now knows uh, going into that job market, right? So if you have an A plus, Net plus, Sec plus, Sys, Sism, CAS, whatever it is that you have, uh, your AWS certs, all that, I I have a strong feeling that you you understand the concepts and you understand how how that works, right? Uh, same with programming, you know, people pick up programming boot camps and they go make $100, $120 an hour, you know, being a programmer after just a year or two of programming. I'm not a programmer. I will never program. I understand that. That's why all the people get paid a lot of money <laughs> to <Right>. program. <laughs> right, right. So, like, lastly, like, so what type of, like, um, salary expectation would someone be kind of targeting for entry level and what is the potential that they could possibly make, you know, switching from like, let's say logistics or something like that or HR to IT in your opinion? So it, it's, it's broad. What I would say right now, uh, what I like, uh, so for instance, Microsoft uh, in January of this year, like literally a few days ago, they switched over to all jobs now should have that description. So uh, if you can like clear everything out and look up Microsoft PC tech or Microsoft uh, help desk, so nationwide. Microsoft PC tech or help desk oh, or sorry. something that, that just something like something that's a job that they would have listed or maybe on there. Just if oh. you go into their career uh, site, Oh, talking about Microsoft Career Site? Okay. Yeah. So Microsoft. That might be an easier way. I, I've not been on there before myself. I've just seen them on uh, LinkedIn. Right, right, right. So into Microsoft but, Careers. But watch, so Washington State uh, mandated January 1st that all companies have to post salary ranges. So mm. if you apply to a Microsoft job, uh, so in, anything, cybersecurity, I, I don't, anything random on there uh, that's IT uh, focused. Okay, so let me find something that's we say data center. Just yeah, that works. So uh, let's see if there's anything junior or something. Uh, nothing like too too senior. Yeah, and I also have to make sure that because some of these are like <laughs> um, database like, technician. Yeah, yep, right where we're at. I think that mm -hmm. one might be uh, decent. This is in Berlin. So shout out to Germany. Oh, we're in Germany. <laughs> Yeah, it should be fine. Right. It's not written in. It's not written like in German. So see at the bottom if there's something that says salary at the bottom. Okay. Typically, oh, you're going to find salaries at the bottom. Um. All right, let's go. Let's go back one and see something stateside. My, my apologies. I should have. I should have. Uh, it should have dawned on me. Yeah. So it has to be something stateside. Okay. They're still going to hot. <laughs> Counties are still going to hide what they can hide. <laughs> so let me go to the United States here. Oh, dang, Netherlands? Holy crap, there's a lot of stuff. Yeah. All right, what else? A lot of different countries, but I got some stuff from the United States, and I got Atlanta, Georgia. I got Santa Clara, Annapolis. Yeah, let's see if we can find. Rest Data Virginia. Center Technician 1. Yep, that looks like a more junior person. Okay. Now, this is in rest in Virginia, so your, your salary should be a little bit higher. Than the rest of the nation, uh, so let, let let's just see if they do have a post on here. Sorry okay. if I'm calling out Microsoft for not posting their their stuff like they said they were. Um, right there. Let's scroll up a little bit. I think it was right there. Just a little bit more. 
Uh, right. USD. Yep. So data center technicians, typical uh, base pay, right? So, so this is a game changer, right? Microsoft now says, this is my baseline and this is my max that I'm going to pay for this position, right? So all the companies are now having to compete with that baseline. So again, this is data center technician. I'm not sure what the background certs, all that is need or experience, but you know, right now that, um, Microsoft will pay that dollar amount minimum up to that dollar amount. So, so you know what you're targeting when you're looking. So it's not you going on Glassdoor or some, uh, third party website. This is literally a company telling you what the minimum and max, uh, range is for this job. It, it, it's a game changer. It really is. Um, and I highly encourage everyone to take a look deeper into what Microsoft is showing. Hey, because I was going to ask that, like, so how how much, like, should you trust Glassdoor, FY levels, you know, all these type of third party sites when it comes to, like, salaries? Low, to say the least. So, so let's, let's say this. Let's say I work for, I'd say Google, for instance, right? And I, I kind of want a pay raise, right? <laughs> So right. me and a few other friends, we go on there and we're say, hey, we're data center technicians, but we're making $95,000 when we're only making 70000 And when you find it on Glassdoor, it says you're making 95000 So now anyone applying to that position now thinks that that should be a $95,000 paying job. So now you don't get any new people coming in <laughs> for that job. <laughs> And the staff that's on there now, again, this is I would this unethical is what I'm going to get at. But I'm not right. saying people aren't unethical. So now the people that are there are now getting pay bumps because of that, right? Again, very very unethical. I I I think one of the biggest things in cybersecurity or any IT field is you need to take ethics classes um, to mm. to that degree. But again, Glassdoor is what people have inputted that has zero input from the company itself. Uh, so it can be very misleading is what I'm trying to get at. Wow, that's great. That's great information. We'll definitely take that into consideration. We've got time for one last question here. Uh, this is from Saud again. Uh, it says, I got a scholarship program, scholarship program dedicated for three months, and I finished a month now for A-plus certificate. If I got a job offer as a PC technician, which one, which one should I choose? Well, that it doesn't tell me. So I'm not. I'm not sure what the um, the question is, right? Yeah. So, so the question just stated that it's a, a PC tech job. There's no second option, right? Uh, I would say jump in, right? Um, if, if the salary uh, that you are at can sustain where you're at, definitely jump into it. So that, that's what I always caution people on: is when you're jumping into new job fields, it's sometimes hard to have that same job pay now cybersecurity yes when you get more senior level engineer roles uh different various roles yes you could crack six figures things like that of course but a lot of it's more 30 to fifty thousand dollar pay ranges when you first start in the first few years of you you know kind of grinding it out right and that's almost in almost every job field it's going to be the same way right oh uh, hey, okay so go ahead, go ahead. Right, i just saw the chat it said uh Lidus also uh shows their uh, salary ranges uh, someone from YouTube uh, mentioned that. Okay. Yeah, um, Mr. Noel Torres. Yeah, so Lido. So that was great because I, I didn't know that, um, you know, Justin just uh, told us about that. And I didn't really know that myself. You know, I used to look at things like Glassdoor and FY Levels and all these other sites. But, you know, uh, going to the actual company's website and seeing the salary range, that is like some really, really good advice. So I do so, appreciate you. So a little that. background is... Uh whenever I give someone a job offer, that's what I'm offering, right? If Glassdoor told you you should be making $5 million, I'm sorry. It's just, right. Right. Um, this is the offer that from the company, uh, you know, and that's, that's kind of where, it, where it's at. Right. Um, and I try to be very upfront uh, when we go to, at least for my team, before you interview, as long as you meet the wickets, you know, the clearances, all that, I already say, hey, this is a salary, right? Do you want to interview? Right. I, there's no point in me trying to interview you and then be a used car salesman at the end of it. I'm going to go ahead and say this is what I will offer you the exact price. Right. Or exact salary. And then from there, you decide, do I want to pursue that 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 job? Why am I going to spend 30 minutes an hour doing this if, if it doesn't lead to us, you know, uh, bringing you on board? 
So, like, when someone's actually, you know, interviewing or, or trying, like, how much room is there for negotiation? Or how would you suggest, what would you suggest as far as negotiation? Uh, Every company is different. I, I, I have a flat. This is what it is. That's for okay. me, right? Other companies also have multiple rounds. I can literally, right now, on here right now, if someone has a TSSCI clearance or a secret clearance and has SEC plus, right after this, I can interview them for PC tech net, oh, uh, the PC tech or senior PC tech role and give them a job offer on Monday. Literally that that's how I operate. Right. Mm -hmm. Other companies might be two, three, four weeks. It might be four or five rounds of people. It's called raising the bar and all this other, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I don't get into all that. Right. Uh, I hey, do me, serious. Right. <laughs> My boss said staff people and maintain stuff there and keep everything under the rug. I've done that for three and a half years. And uh, they said, Hey, if that's how you want to operate, that's how I operate. So, you know, every now and then I might bring in a, a technician or a network admin or something like that into the interview, but it's one interview and it's either a yes or a no about a day or two later. That's it. Right, right. All right. So, hey, um, you know, we appreciate you uh, coming through today, Justin. Uh, thank you so much for sharing this uh, wealth of knowledge with everyone here today. Um, lastly, like where can the people, I know we've said it, but you know we have some people uh, that just join the chat or whatever. So where can people find you as far as like your information and how to connect with you? Uh, so easy way is uh, of course, you know, if we drop it in, in chat, but the other way is if you just look up Justin Jones, uh, IT program manager, uh, I typically will, will populate there. Um, I try to always share wealth of information for veteran, transitioning uh, service members, uh, people are trying to break into the cybersecurity field. Uh, I, I've, I've chatted with people. I, I had a, uh, a diver in the military, in the Navy, that transitioned, and he's now a cybersecurity engineer four years later, right? Um, so I might work for him in a couple more years. So I'm like, hey, remember me? <laughs> right. Um, so so I, I, I try to at least uh, once a week on Wednesdays uh, share a job post about, hey, connect with recruiters. Let's try to find you a job, that type of stuff. And then throughout the week, something that's veteran based or other IT based like this job scan page, right? I'll probably Monday or Tuesday pop up that job scan and say, hey, if, you, if you're if you having issues, you know, finding jobs, you know, try to tweak your resume a little bit better utilizing this tool. Boom. Um, type thing. All right. Hey, and there it is. Hey, so we appreciate all of you joining us this Saturday. Thank you so much for, uh, you know, sharing your time with us. And we hope that you got some out of it today uh, if you felt like this message was beneficial in any way please click like on the video and share the broadcast on your social media right well that we can get the message out to the people uh thank you so much for joining us um thank you so much for listening to justin and we'll see you later i have a good one